Renovating a vintage workshop steam engine part 3 finds me removing the cladding from the cylinder to have a look what's underneath it. The cladding is just some thin sheet steel wrapped round the cylinder and held in place with some 6BA brass bolts. A quick word of caution when working on old steam engines. Engines of this age often have asbestos present and sometimes it's underneath the cladding so I'm being very careful as I take this cladding off and I hope that I don't find any. And as the cladding is released we can see that the cylinder is definitely an asbestos free zone. I can also see some more damage to the cast iron around the flange where the bolt comes through to hold the cylinder cover in place. This is not a major issue as this part is covered by the cladding anyway. Currently you're watching the removal of the cylinder cover with the gland in it. First of all I used a plastic handle screwdriver to tap the piston back and then the cylinder cover came away quite easily by using another screwdriver to lever the gap. This took slightly longer than expected because the cover did not want to come away as the holes in the cover are quite tight on the shanks of the bolts. A new receptacle, known as a plastic box, is required for the nuts and bolts from the rest of the engine, so I can keep the cylinder and the rest of the engine parts separate. Here I'm removing the main bearing caps, and I put them down on the bench in the same orientation as they are in the main bearing itself. That way, when I put them back together, they're the right way around. Once the crankshaft flywheel, connecting rod and valve rod are removed as one unit, the big end bearings can be temporarily refitted and held in place with just one nut. Looking at the slide bars, I'm testing to see whether they're a loose fit on the studs and they're not, they're really tight. I don't think I'll need to bother with this. Once I've degreased the engine and cleaned these parts up, I'll be able to easily paint round them. The next thing to do is to remove the entire bed plate from the wooden mounting base. The engine bed plate and the wooden mounting base are covered in oil. And for this I'm using some white spirit as usual, which will cut into the years of oil residue and allow me to wipe it away with a cloth. In reality though, someone's done this recently because there really was not that much oil on the engine. Most of the oil on the bed plate was oil that I'd put on because I do tend to over oil steam engines when I run them for the first time. Turning the base on its side and looking underneath the engine shows something interesting. The old baseboard with the neatly cut square holes for the bolt retainers is much older than the surrounding wood. The upper polished wood effect part has been added much later. You can see if you look around the edge. This is the hole for the steam exhaust from the bottom of the cylinder. I'm going to have to rethink the exhaust system on this engine. Over now to the flywheel and it's time to remove the key. Never use steel to remove the key because it will mash up the key. I always use a piece of brass and here I'm using a piece of brass angle. Gently tap until the key gives way and then flies across the room. It's a slightly tapered key to key the flywheel onto the shaft. Once the key has been removed and put in a safe place, the crankshaft can be easily withdrawn from the flywheel. Then these parts can also be put in a safe place until I'm ready to work on them. There is, however, a problem with the flywheel. At some stage, someone has hammered the key in too hard and it's just chipped a lump out of the flywheel. Thankfully, this damage is not all the way through the flywheel and the key can be put in from the other side, as indeed it was before I dismantled the engine. I have a simple fix for this and I will show it as the series develops. Finally, a quick look at the crankshaft. By using a micrometer, I can see that the bearings are evenly worn and in quite good condition, this is a good thing. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.